Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to contribute to the debate on the floor. I'd also like to add my voice in congratulating the Black Stars for the victory yesterday. And we pray and hope that come um, their next match, they'll repeat the same feat. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Ministry of Finance and the Minister of Finance himself, we'd like to thank leadership and members of the House for the support you have enjoyed from you in the implementation of the 2022 budget and particularly for the full participation of um, the House during the budget presentation last Thursday. The atmosphere was indeed conducive and commendable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, listening to my colleague on the other side, I'm minded to reiterate that the 2023 budget has been formed or prepared in set some certain context. And the context is that we are faced with both uh, a difficult global and domestic challenges. We also have an ongoing IMF um, negotiations, and also we have um, debt operations, which we are trying to come up with to help us bring our debt levels to a sustainable level. Also, we have set some targets for ourselves in this context, and the target is that we hope to raise about 143 billion Ghana cities in revenue. We want to spend 190 billion in expenditure. We also want to do an overall real GDP growth of 2.8 percent. Um, we also want to end uh, inflation at the end of December uh, in the region of 18.9 percent. We are thinking of a primary balance on commitment base of 0.7 percent. And we are hoping that our gross international reserves will cover not less than 3.3 percent, 3.3 months of imports. So, Mr. Speaker, this is the context in which this budget has been prepared. Mr. Speaker, we must all admit that we are not in normal times. At the end of 2019, we completed an IMF program successfully. We saw um, our growth rates. We saw our growth rate moving around 7% from 2017 to 2019. Our currency was strong, and inflation had been reduced to a single digit. So, Mr. Speaker, if today we find ourselves in this situation, clearly it tells you that we are not in normal times. Mr. Speaker, little did we know that a global pandemic and a war in Europe will bring us down to our knees like this, where we see our currency depreciating by almost 54 percent, and we have no access to the international capital markets, something we've had since 2007. So, Mr. Speaker, this is really worrying. And, Mr. Speaker, the, the quickly the quicker, sorry, we do something about it, the better. And it is in this region, or it is in this light, that we are asking our police on the other side to support government with the revenue measures that it has stated in paragraphs 212 to 222 of this year's budget. Mr. Speaker, if we continue to kick, we cannot kick the ball down the road because the every delay that we delay in passing out this revenue measure means we are pushing Ghana down the drain. As it stands now, our tax revenue to GDP ratio is 11 percent, way below that of our peers, which is around 18 percent, Mr. Speaker. So clearly, we need to do something about it. We need to raise more revenue to help us push the development agenda, also to stabilize the economy and make things better for our citizenry. So when you check paragraph 223 to 224 of the budget, Mr. Speaker, GRA has put out some reform measures, both administrative and some in technology, it's technology driven. We are hoping that that will help us increase our tax to GDP um, ratio to about 18% in the medium term and also improve on um, the way we collect our taxes. Mr. Speaker, these measures include um, some fundamental changes in the IT system where we have online filing of taxes, we have digitization of our tax clearance certificates, the EVAT invoicing, and digitization of internal processes as well as records to make uh, tax collection more efficient and to maximize revenue as well. But Mr. Speaker, improving the tax collection process is not the only way to increase revenue. That is why there is a need to raise some form of taxes to support our fiscal consolidation. 
and I'm therefore urging my colleagues on the other side to support governments with this current revenue measures before the House, as listed in paragraphs 215 to 222, like I mentioned earlier. The first, we all know, is the VAT. Um, VAT. Mr. Speaker, you all bear with me that successive governments have benefited from the VAT. Government is seeking to increase VAT by 2.5%. VAT currently is 12.5% and not the 21% my colleague stated on the other side. VAT currently is 12.5% and government is hoping that you will, you will help um, government pass the 2.5% increment which we are hoping will raise about 2.7 billion Ghana cities um, for development for this nation. Mr. Speaker, um, we all know, I mean, you will mention 2015. But we have gone and moved past the 2015 event, sorry, the 1995 event of the VAT. And currently, successive governments, including the previous governments, benefited from the use of VAT because VAT is a more sustained way of collecting revenue. And we need this revenue to push the development agenda and stabilize our country. So, Mr. Speaker, regardless of what the politics is, on the VAT side. This is, the time is now for us to move together to make sure we raise more revenue for our nation. Mr. Speaker, I heard my colleagues say that they will resist every attempt to reduce the E-Levy to 1%. The E-Levy currently is 1.5%, but he said that he will reduce every, he will resist every attempt to reduce the E-Levy because that is the measure we have brought to this country. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the measure we have brought to the risk revenue measure is to decrease it from 1.5% to 1%. So if you say that you resist every attempt, you resist every attempt in passing this revenue measure, then you are telling the people of Ghana, uh, Ghana that you are insensitive to the applied. We are reducing it from 1.5% to 1%. And I want you to support us in this regard. Okay, hold on. Yes. Thank you, member. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable colleague, the Honourable Abina Oseasari, had said that we in the minority had said that we will resist the e levy and attempt to reduce the rate to 1%. Mr. So Speaker, she's misrepresenting the fact. Mr. So Speaker, my point, I spoke, and so she's making reference to it. So Speaker, my point was that they had said, they had said, that the e levy is, is not going to affect the poor. Yes. Mr. Speaker, to the extent that the poor that engage in a hundred city transfer, they are exempting the poor. Mr. Speaker, and I had said that what has all of a sudden happened to, for the government to re-levy the hundred cities, and we have said that we will resist that attempt forcefully, any attempt to add the poor to the e levy bracket. Because the Speaker, currently, by their own agreement, they are not part. We never mentioned the rate. The Speaker, I did not talk about one small one. Very well. Yes, I will continue. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. We are coming with a measure to reduce e levy from 1.5 to 1%. And if you say that you, you resist the passage of this measure, then you are telling the people of Ghanaians that you resist the passage from one point, the reduction from 1.5% to 1%. Mr. Speaker, I want to move on on that. But Mr. Speaker, this 1%, this 1%, this 1% was arrived at by continuous engagement. Mr. Speaker, continuous engagement with stakeholders. And we were in this house in December 2021 when the Honorable Minority Leader said it is better for us to reduce the e levy to 1%. So today, if we are coming with a measure that will reduce the e levy to 1%, I think the e levy debate is closed and should be accepted because we have reduced the rate from 1.5% to 1%. Just like we all, all stakeholders, including your own minority leader, said in December 2021 that this e levy that we are introducing should be reduced to 1%. Mr. Speaker. This measure, Mr. Speaker, will give us 2.3 billion Ghana cities, and we believe that it will help us do what is expected of us to stabilize the economy and improve on development in this country. Mr. Speaker, I also want to ask, Mr. Speaker, there is also another revenue measure that we believe will go a long way to leave a lot of money in the hands of our locals. 
and that is the unified property collection rate, unified property rate collection. Mr. Speaker, government is partnering with GRA to make sure that the assemblies, the municipals, the metropolitans collect the needed property taxes. And with this, government is going to leave about 70% of the revenues collected in the hands of the locals. So then they are going to take charge of their own development and get more revenue to carry out the things, the infrastructure needs that every district, municipal and metropolitan needs. So Mr. Speaker, we urge the House to support this revenue measure that will increase or leave more money in the hands at the local level. Again, Mr. Speaker, in the spirit of burden sharing, the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy will be, will be converted into a growth and sustainability levy. And that will cover all entities. And Mr. Speaker, it's in three categories. We Honorable, have category A. Can they hold on? Earlier on, the majority leader, deputy leader had been on the street. I declined to give him because I thought it was the person on her feet is able to speak for herself. Atu is able to speak for himself. I thought we were not going to litigate this matter because on either side you have people who would speak. But if it is on another matter, I would like to listen to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Deputy Minister made a statement which is factually incorrect. And I want to correct it. She said that we are all in this house when the majority, uh, minority leader made a proposal for the e-level should be brought to 1%. Never on this floor, ne yes, never on this floor that the minority leader made that proposal. So for that to go into the record, it should be corrected. He never made any proposal on this floor that the e-level should be 1%. That is factually incorrect. He should correct it. He didn't say that. <laughs> Yes, and I would have told you that. I'm, I, I am happy. I am happy. My respected colleague, Honorable Abuji, wants certain supposed inaccuracies corrected. With the opportunity given me, I hereby state that VAT is not 21 percent. I prefer In his argument, said VAT. VAT is 21 percent. Again, again, at two forty in this argument, kindly, she she is responding to that. Yes, Mr. Speaker, he is asking for. She is responding Mr. Speaker, yes. to that. Mr. Speaker, he he is saying he is saying that Abina should withdraw. I am saying that though he at two has been corrected, he must withdraw. And again, I took force him for God to tell us. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. He forgot to tell us I'm, I'm what happened to the GDP I'm, 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 I'm capable. When you paid penal rates. Thank you, leader. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Honorable we need Mr. Minister, decided. please continue. Please. Honorable Deputy Minister, please continue. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I mentioned that even when we went to go, the honorable minority leader said it again that this was a levy that he asked that we reduce it to one percent and we refused and now we are now bringing it to one percent i never said he said it in this house but i said in as members of parliament yes members of parliament you are not in home mr speaker i as i, I said in the spirit of burden sharing the national fiscal stability levy will be converted into a growth and sustainability levy to cover all entities and in, in this vein, we have categorized them into three different um, groups. The first group is the existing group, that, uh, the group that currently pays the 5%. And we are adding on um, six uh, set more sectors to help us raise some revenue. And this is 5% on your profits before tax. And then the second group, that's the category B, are all other entities. And this group is expected to pay 2.5% on your profit before tax. And the third group is the extractive industry. And that this group, they are expected to pay about one, up to 1% 1 of this levy. Mr. Speaker, all this will also raise an additional 1.4 billion um, to help us generate the revenue that we all hope to generate. Mr. Speaker, before, uh, before I conclude, I just want to correct a few uh, misconceptions that have been put out there. One, this current budget, the 2023 budget, is going to provide lots of jobs. 
when you look at the youth cards program, there's about one million jobs from 2022 to 2025 that this youth start is going to provide. Mr. Speaker, already you start. We have begun a pilot project with about 70 people when we have spent about 1.98 million Ghana cities. And Mr. Speaker, again, let me put the road tolls in perspective. In 2022, when we said that we were abolishing road tolls, we said that it, is, it will be applied on roads that have only public-private partnership. That was what we said in 2022. So if for some reason we are bringing back the road tolls, then it is for roads that will have public-private partnership. So um, let's just correct that one. And I think the last one has to do, the last has to do with the batch rates which I corrected. Effectively, batch rate is 12.5%. Mr. Speaker, we will bring the amendment to this house and you will see that it is 12.5%. And government is seeking to increase it by 2.5%, making it 15%. Mr. Speaker, my colleague on the other side spoke a lot about the debt issues. We know it will feature prominently in this debate. Government is working with all stakeholders to make sure that we bring the debt to a sustainable level. And in doing that, we will continue to engage everybody. Mr. Speaker, this is the time that we have to support government. We are in this together. And that is why we team the budget in carbon budget. Let us work together, devoid of all our politics and everything, because Ghana needs all of us. And that is why we are representing the people of Ghana in this chamber. We plead with you, support us, and let it happen. As we pass, let us pass the budget and economic policies of this government to one, help us one, stabilize this economy and also help the economy to grow and give support to the vulnerable because it is in raising these monies that we are also able to serve the vulnerable in society. Mr. Speaker, on this note, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, first of all, let me debunk this assertion being attributed to the Honorable Dr. Atufos that he says that the VAT rate is 21%. There's an interest rate and there's an effective interest rate. When you go to the bank and you are told that your interest rate is 21% per annum, but payable in four quarters, there's an effective interest rate. And those of us who have some knowledge in finance and economics, we do that calculation. And so let me put it on record that I heard the Honorable Atufosi say that even though you quote your VAT at 12.5, initially it was 17, you decided that you were high above NHIL and high above Get Fund and put it as a standing cost. So when it was 17.5, all you do is to pay 17.5. Now that you've high up the two, which is the 5%, it becomes a direct cost. So you first pay the 5% on the item before you calculate the 12.5% on the gross amount. That is even worse. And I expect people who understand finance to understand this simple analogy. Honorable, speak for yourself. What I heard him say and what is in record is what was repeated by the Honorable Deputy Minister. Your explanation is yours. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, that is why you, gave, you give us the opportunity to rise up, to expansiate, to elucidate, and sometimes to educate the, or those who do not understand this sector. Mr. Speaker, we knew that the state of the economy was the state of paralysis. We knew that this economy was in a state of comatose. We knew that this economy is nothing to write on about. But at least this budget and the happiness on the day of the budget and today reaffirms our fear. First of all, it has been the tradition that every time the budget is read, in most occasions, His Excellency the Vice President, Dr. Bamiya sits on that chair. In this budget, he was conspicuously absent. He was conspicuously absent. Where is the Vice President running away from? Where is he going to? Today, in this debate, the chamber on the other side is virtually empty. That tells you that this budget is not a budget of hope and it cannot offer us anything. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, when you look at the budget, Today, 
our debt is in the roof. Today, inflation is over 40 percent. The budget deficit has been missed. The exchange rate has been missed. It's about 50 percent, and our gross reserves has reduced by almost three billion. That is the state of the economy. And these are the indicators you look at when you are analyzing a budget. But Mr. Speaker, the minister attempts to put the blame on revenues. Mr. Speaker, if you look at gold, for instance, gold has increased in price, cocoa has increased in price, crude oil has increased in price. The minister misses revenue targets by just two billion. In fact, he's even anticipating that at the end of the year, his revenue target will be exceeded. And so if your revenue target is exceeded, if your expenditure is held in check, how come your economy is deteriorating? This is something we have to analyze as a house. And for me, this is not about NDC, it's not about MPP. How come your economy, you claim to be meeting the targets, and yet your inflation, your exchange rate, all the indicators are in the negative? Even in the minister's own statement, if you go to the tables and you look at the tables that he himself has provided, you would realize that when it comes to inflation, and I'm even discounting the West African countries in terms of French-speaking countries, Gambia, their inflation is 17%. Guinea, their inflation is 12%. Liberia, their inflation is 6%. Nigeria, 18%. Sierra Leone, 25%. Ghana, 27.2%. This is the minister's own figures. Today we are even at 40 point something percent. So this analogy that the current problem we are facing is a result of so-called external factors is not true. Because in the minister's own table, Ghana is an outlier. The truth is that we have spent more than we earn, we are mismanaging the system, and we are having a difficult moment. Mr. Speaker, every country goes through challenges. But when you go through challenges, what we expect leadership to do is to demonstrate commitment, think outside the box, and get innovative. We expect the president to demonstrate leadership. When the president announced this, the only thing that came out of the president's message, as far as I'm concerned, was that Sikam Bedede. Mr. Speaker, Sikam Bedede is not a policy option. Sikam Bedede cannot be a policy option. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, breaking the eight cannot be a policy option. Mr. Speaker, what we need is that government must realign expenditure with your revenues. But even more importantly, what this budget is proposing, like Donald Watuforsen said, is to increase VAT by 2.5%. They are reducing the benchmark values and scrapping it completely. Those who have investments will take a haircut. e levy and I want to point out, the minority's position is consistent with that of President Mahama. And that on 7th January, on 7th January, 2025, not if, and I mean not if, right. when, by the grace of the Almighty God, right. when President Muhammad holds that sword, Mr. Speaker, and swears the oath of allegiance to the Republic of Ghana, yes. within the shortest possible time, this illegal, this obnoxious levy, whether 1%, 3%, 2%, whatever, it will be scrapped in its entirety. Mr. Speaker, at this stage, it is obvious that the people of Ghana are very disappointed in the finance minister. The minority side has moved a motion to get the minister of finance stranger. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, let me dove my heart and salute the 98 MPs on the other side who have called on the Minister of Finance to resign or be booted out. Yes. You are men of integrity. You have demonstrated love to this country. You have shown that when it matters most, 
you will do what is needful. It is my hope that when we start the debate and they stand for the vote, you will stand firm and trust and show that commitment. Let us be done. On that note, let me say that the resignation or dismissal of the finance minister would be meaningless unless it is extended to Dr. Baumia and the economic management team. Because if you dismiss the finance minister and you leave the head of the economic management team, what would you have achieved, Mr. Speaker? What would you have achieved? It would be meaningless. So let us clean the whole sheet and get the entire incompetent bite out and bring in fresh blood with fresh ideas who can deep the previous budget reading. The Honorable Sage Chairman Zabos, the Majority Leader demonstrated competence when he came to the presentation. Thank you, of the thank, you. thank you, thank you. Let anybody debate that, and let yeah, anybody contradict my statement. Is it not true that he did well? He did very well. He did not do well. He did well. My no, my yeah, 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 one more minute. Mr. Speaker, one more minute. No, Mr. Speaker, I'm a ranking member, and the ranking members are entitled to 15 minutes. That is what was agreed here. 15 minutes, Mr. Speaker, as ranking member. Mr. Speaker, as if that is not enough, my colleague, the Honorable Ayasa, who talks about you start. If you look at the 2022 budget, the amount budgeted for you start is 1 billion. Abuna, the Honorable Abuna, the Honorable Abuna Osei Asari, Deputy Minister for Finance. Because she's sitting on Adjoa Safo's chair, he showed her as Adjoa Safo. Mr. Speaker, the amount budgeted for you start was 1 billion. Honorable, I've taken note that it was, and I actually called you by name. Yes. Honorable Abna. Oh, I've corrected that. Not Honorable Adjoa please. Thank you very much. This is my seat. This is not the seat. We're here, we're here, we're here. We're here, we're here. We're here, Let me make this quote. Because your seat. That the youth that program had a budgeted amount of one billion. That is what we approved for you to spend. Today, you've spent 1.9 million, representing 0.1% of the total amount budgeted for. So how can you spend less than 1% and still claim that the use tax is a solution to our unemployment problem? Clearly, there's mismanagement and there is misalignment. Mr. Speaker, there's something is happening in this budget that I think I should draw our attention to. Our total deficit was 44 billion CD. So the question is, how did the finance minister finance the 44 billion? Mr. Speaker, if you read the budget, the minister of finance says that from external sources, he got only 8 billion. What it means is that there's a 32 billion gap to be filled. And yet in page 37, paragraph 142, the minister himself confirms that he was able to raise only 8 billion from domestic finance. So of the 32 billion, he himself confirmed that he raised only 8 billion. When you take the 8 billion from the 32 billion, what it means is that about 24 billion could not be financed from domestic financing. And if you look at the media review budget, he put in there the central government financing. Today he's cleverly taking up central government financing and just put domestic finance. If you do the analysis, what it means is that the Minister of Finance is borrowing 24 billion from the central government yes. against the Public Financial Management Act and against the Bank of Ghana Act because you can't do more than 5% of previous year's total revenue. Mr. Speaker, this is serious. If the Bank of Ghana is financing it to the tune of 24 billion, there's something called sinorage in financing. What it means is that you are putting excess liquidity into the system. When you put excess liquidity into the system, it picks up the economy and it causes inflation. I'm therefore not surprised that today's inflation is at a rate of over 40%. Mr. Speaker, this is serious. 
But finally, Mr. Speaker, I know that time is not on our side. When you find yourself in this hole, what you do is to stop digging. Mr. Speaker, the minister is projecting that our revenues would rise from 96 billion to 143 billion in the 2023 budget. It means that our revenues will go up by 47 billion. One would have expected that he will cut back on expenditure. But our expenditure is increasing by 57 billion. Mr. Speaker, this is clearly unsustainable. And for me, I think that both houses, both majority and minority, let us put our differences aside. Let us scrutinize this budget very well. Do not let us get political, but take concrete steps to reject some of these issues that will bring hardship onto the people of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, tomorrow we will eventually be entering into December, and for the first time, MPs will attest that our famous Christmas jingles, nobody is hearing the Christmas jingles. This Christmas is the most difficult Christmas. This Christmas will be the hardest hit Christmas that we've ever had. But I'm convinced, Mr. Speaker, that come what may, come what may, the people of Ghana would know that this budget is not helpful. This budget is inimical. This budget will only cause hardship. And there's something ought to be done about that. On that note, Mr. Speaker, let me thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank you for the opportunity to contribute to today's debate on the 2023 Budget and Economic Statement presented by the Honorable Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata. And Mr. Speaker, I'm told that today is the former President's birthday. Uh, His Excellency President John Mahama. I want to take the opportunity to wish him well and to take the advice he has given to our friends on the other side that let us support government to revive the economy. Yeah, yeah. In, at home this weekend, he, he, the Speaker of Parliament has also advised us to rise above partisanship in this debate and to focus and to focus on reviving the economy. Mr. Speaker, the context of the 2023 budget has to be put right. That this budget has been presented at a time that we, 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 we are facing highly uncertain and deteriorating global conditions. We all know the unstable domestic macroeconomic environment and the ongoing IMF program negotiations and a possible debt operation as part of measures to restore debt sustainability. I want to quickly refer to some of the statements that were made by Honorable Atuforsin in respect of the debt exchange program and to clarify that my engagement with him where I spoke about various scenarios were just possibilities of what could happen under the debt exchange program. No decisions have been made yet and I want to put that on record that government is here to announce and engage stakeholders under the debt exchange program for specifics to be done. Every uh, examples or proposals that have been thrown out there are just suggestions on how the debt operation will work and they are not final decisions of government. So I just want to put that in perspective. Right. Mr. Speaker, I will focus much more on the expenditures of government as far as my contribution is concerned since my sister has already spoken to the revenue measures. We are experiencing high levels in global inflation, global interest rates, food prices, crude oil prices, strengthening of the US dollar, and tight financing conditions globally. Mr. Speaker, this is not just a Ghana situation. And when you bring it under the domestic development, I agree when our friends on the other side talks about the difficulty in the, in the economy. High exchange rate depreciation year to year at the moment, we know is at 54.2%. High inflation from last year's 12.6%. Today, at the end of October, we are talking about inflation at 40.4%. We have seen high interest rates. T-bill rate is at the moment 32.5%. 
from the 5.12.5% uh, as at December 2021. And we have seen the dwindled gross international reserves to 2.9 from 4.4 months. And then we have suffered credit rating downgrades from Fitch to Standard & Poor's and global ratings up to C in August 2022, and Moody's as well. So, Mr. Speaker, we acknowledge that the economy is in difficult times, and it is not only to Ghana, but it's part of the global difficulties that every country is going through. Because of that, we are likely to see slow growth prospects in 2023. And this year, even though we are projecting to do 3.5%, Mr. Speaker, in 2023, we are likely to even further see decline in our growth to 2.8% because of the cuttings and, and the fiscal consolidation we need to do. There's also significant fiscal stress emanating from high expenditure rigidities in our budget. Mr. Speaker, I had my, uh, uh, my colleague, uh, the Honorable uh, John Jinapo spoke about the seemingly high expenditures in our budget, even though we are talking about cutting down on expenses. Mr. Speaker, it is because at the moment we are unable to reflect the outcome of the debt operations that we want to do in the current figures. That is why you see that even though we are trying to cut expenditures, we are still, we are still having high expenditure figures in the budget. But finally, when we reflect them, you will see that the expenditures will come down. Can you, um Mr. Speaker, to take the seat. Honorable Member, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana expenditure portfolio has a special difficulty. There is significant rigidities in our budgeting. And so it becomes very difficult for government to cut on expenditures. Today, as we speak, the debt service plus amortization when you combine that with compensation, it takes away about 110% of our revenues. And we all know that these are matters that government cannot do much in terms of cutting down on such expenditures. And that is why sometimes, even though it is objective to cut down on the expenditures, we still see high levels of expenditures in the budget. And the high debt burden, which has become unsustainable. Mr. Speaker, we announced we announced in the 2022 budget, in the aftermath of the cabinet meeting, to do at least 30% cut on discretionary expenditures. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the figures that have been reported in this budget, indeed, government cut down in various expenditure line items in the budget. For instance, compensation had a, a, a reduction in the expenditure rate. Uh, goods and services had a... Uh, yes. We even, yes, please, the figures are here, you can check, you can check. Compensation had reduction, goods and services had reduction, KPES had reduction, discretionary expenditures had reduction. Unfortunately, due to the forex, we had extra payments on our interest rates, which constituted a high component of the, of the debt portfolio. And so we still saw an increment in the overall expenditure of government. But government was really committed to cutting down on expenditures and all the figures as reported in this budget confirms that indeed government was not just uh, wishing to cut expenditures but actually cut expenditures. Mr. Speaker, I wish to take us to page 55, page 56 and page 57 of the 2023 budget and there are about 36 expenditure line items that government has considered as expenditure measures to cut down on expenditures. So in this budget, we are not only seeking to do aggressive revenue measures, we are also seeking to aggressively cut down on a number of expenditures. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I will take us through some of the measures. From paragraph 223 to paragraph, um, to paragraph 225, Mr. Speaker, a number of measures have been announced in this budget. And one of them is to reduce 
the threshold on earmarked funds from 25% of tax revenue to 17.5% of tax revenue and ensure the revenue expenditure operations of the earmarked funds are implemented through the GIFMIS platform. Government flagship programs are being reviewed to reflect relevance, promote efficiency, and ensure value for money. We are going to continue with the 30% cut in salaries of president, vice president, ministers, deputy ministers, MMDs, MMDCs, SOEs, and office holders, including state-owned enterprises. Mr. Speaker, we are placing a cap on salary adjustment of SOEs to be lower than negotiated base pay increase on central spine salary structures for each year. Mr. Speaker, if you compare 2023 budget to 2022 budget, one significant omission you will see is Appendix 10C, which constitutes concessionary and non-concessionary borrowing of government in every year. In the 2023 budget, we dropped Appendix 10C as our commitment to further borrowing for new projects in this country. Last year alone, Mr. Speaker, Appendix 10C constituted about $2 billion in the 2022 budget. This year, zero as far as non-concessionary and concessionary yeah. borrowing are concerned. Yeah. Government is indeed committed to cutting down on the cost and expenditures of government. We, have, we are also negotiating public sector wage adjustment within the context of burden sharing and productivity and, and, and ability to pay. Mr. Speaker, we are managing public sector hiring within budgetary constraints. Public procurement approval process with GIFMIS will be integrated to ensure that projects approved are aligned with budget allocation. And here we are talking about commitment control to make sure that all the budgetary items that government intend to cut are truly cut, as was done in 2022. Mr. Speaker, other measures signaling burden sharing on the part of government have also been outlined in the budget. For instance, there will be reduction in fuel allocation by 50% for key government workers a ban on the use of V8 or its equivalent, except for cross-country travel outside the capital cities. An official travel ban across government limited to only essential ones. There will be meetings and workshops. There will be no meetings and workshops for uh, SOEs and government institutions outside of this country. Mr. Speaker, the era where board members board planes to go and have meetings outside the country will be a thing of the past. There is also moratorium on government, on government sponsored external training and staff development for the 2023 financial year. Mr. Speaker, we are also talking about reduction in size of convoys. And a freeze, yes, is very, very important. Then there will be a freeze on recruitment into the civil and public service except in very critical cases and a moratorium placed on the creation of new government agencies in 2023. Mr. Speaker, all non-critical projects will be suspended in 2023, as of already referred to in Appendix 10C of the 2023 budget. No public funds should be used to purchase and distribute hampers in 2020, uh, 2023 budget, and there shall be no printing of diaries, notepads, calendars, and other promotional merchandise by the MMDAs. Mr. Speaker, despite all these cuttings, government has acknowledged 2022 to be a very difficult year. And we know that the very poor in our society continue to struggle. So government has looked at the social protection policy to increase the, the, the payments that is given to LIP beneficiaries that we are going to double the amount that is paid to them. Currently, 45 cities is going to 90 cities, and the number of beneficiaries are also going to increase from the 344,000 to about 450,000 households across the country. Mr. Speaker, we are also tackling the school feeding program and increasing the rate that is paid to the caterers so that our children who are in school will continue to be supported. The National Health Insurance Scheme, the Mr. authority... Mr. Deputy Minister, your last word. Mr. Speaker, I thank you very much for the opportunity to contribute to this debate and I wish to reinforce that as we speak, government is in discussion with the fund to have a program 
that will restore the economy. Mr. Speaker, the key objective... Mr. Speaker, last year there was a big debate in this House where members were rejecting the EM, uh, the E levy and asking us to go to the IMF. Of course, our position was that we were not going to the IMF as long as we could pass the E-Levy. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, unfortunately, our friends battalized the E-Levy to the extent that we did not get the intended results. So we are currently with the fund, and I'm happy to announce that we have put before the fund a post-COVID-19 program for economic growth as blueprint to address the economic crisis and restore macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability onto our country. I thank you very much, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable yeah. Speaker. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I don't even need 10 minutes to look through this criminal debt that they came to read. Mr. Speaker, I have been sitting here since the day the minister read the budget. And I was. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I was very surprised that the minister and members of government are seeking to take away monies that investors gave them when they needed most to fund the economy. And what they sought to do was to unilaterally come and announce a formula they will use to give back the people's money or not to give it to them. Mr. Speaker, the effects and the impact of those announcements are going to hurt this economy for a very, very long time. Mr. Speaker, in the budget, the minister wants to go back to these same people to go and collect 44 billion from them. I don't know whether they will be said generous to give you money when the others haven't come. Paragraph 150 of this budget says that 45% of our public debt is in short-term instruments that are due in one year. When you work the numbers, it comes to about $307 billion. We must find that money and give it to them. Obviously, you have to go back to others to collect money to refinance this. The two give you almost $250 billion that you need from the market. Mr. Speaker, you also owe this market $52 billion in interest payments. So cumulatively, your exposure to this government, I mean this group of people, is $300 billion Ghana cities. They are the most important players if this budget can be implemented or cannot be implemented. But Mr. Speaker, I am not surprised. If you are a fan of Football, and I'm happy to see you the other day jubilating when Ghana won. But there was a player in, in the United Kingdom, in, in England, called Maguire, who was playing for Manchester United. Harry Maguire. He's a defender. He was tackling everybody and throwing his bodies everywhere that he was seen as the best defender in the world. Manchester United went and bought him. He became the biggest threat at the center of Manchester United's defense, tackling Manchester players and giving assists to opponents. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when even the opponents failed to score, Maguire will score for them. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you remember in this country we also had an economic Maguire. This economic Maguire went to Malata market, and we're clapping, saying that this man is the best in managing foreign currency. The same economic Maguire was roaming at Central University, delivering lectures on how to restore the value of the city. Mr. Speaker, when we gave this Maguire the opportunity to be at the center of our defense, he became the risk of our own goal. <laughs> Dr. Mohamia, our economic Maguire, is now tackling all the fundamentals of our economy and destroying all of them. <laughs> when he said that he was the best in calculating inflation, he moved us to 40.4. <laughs> when he said that he was the best in managing depreciation, that was 9% at the Dr. Mohamia, he moved it to 54%.
Mr. Speaker, this man was crying everywhere that businesses are collapsing because of interest rate. Today, Koku Mesa Enterprise will have to borrow above the 36% government is borrowing, somewhere around 45 to 50%. Mr. Speaker, the biggest fear now is that we may be paying appearance fee for this Maguire to now score the ambition against the other. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, hold on. Yes, Honorable Katie Hammond. Mr. Speaker, no, no, my friend is Mr. Speaker, the Honorable, the Honorable Member from Ogodobi uh, rose up on a point of order against the Honorable Member, so I'm not sure why he's sitting now there. So get up and make a point of order. Even so, get up. Mr. Speaker, I actually yeah. he didn't catch my eye, so I, di I didn't see him. Yes. Honorable Member, continue. Mr. Speaker, what this tells us that we, will be very, we should be very careful in signing everybody that appears to be a good footballer. Because in some instances, like in the case of our own economic Magaya, we signed an opponent who ended up tackling all our economic indicators and destroying them the way Maguire is tackling Manchester United defenders. Today, when the hair sees Maguire with the ball, he doesn't know whether he's going to score or he's going to help his team. I thought we had heard the, the last of him. The last time he just came out with another naive hypothesis that he now wants to get gold to go and collect oil wire for our country. Mr. Speaker, whether you are buying your oil with CDs or you are doing butter, how does that change your balance of payment? How does that change your balance of payment? So, Mr. Speaker, you have to be very careful that at the heart of our economic management is the biggest risk to our economy. Unfortunately, just like Man United cannot sack Maguire until his contract ends, we are saddled with this man until 2024. God help us. But unfortunately, Maguire now says that he wants a free road to head up everywhere on the pitch. He wants to become president. We must find somebody in the team to man mark our own Maguire. And I'm happy Kennedy Japon and Alan, and Honorable Alan Shamante are doing this job for us and we must not fail them. But Mr. Speaker, Ghana's economy is in crisis. And unfortunately, we don't have anybody. And for the Minister for Finance, may I have not left him for your Agenda 98 people <laughs> should deal with you. <laughs> My focus is the, oh, yes. is the Maguire. We must find a way to remove it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Bank of Ghana's own recent press statement that was issued on Monday, just yesterday, and it is titled Bank of Ghana Monetary Policy Committee Press Release, November 28, 2022. Mr. Speaker, the governor was at pain to explain that and Mr. Speaker, with your permission, I would like to read. He said the Bank of Ghana survey and consumer confidence conducted in October 2022 continue to, to point to softening economic sentiment. Consumer confidence dipped on account of rising inflation and uncertainty about the future of our economic conditions. Business sentiments also deteriorated on concerns about rising operational costs, sharp currency depreciation, and weak consumer demand. Both the consumer and the businessman have no confidence in our economy. This is the Bank of Ghana governor speaking. Mr. Speaker, the governor even explains why economic activities contracted in the third quarter and said the reasons why our economic co activities contracted was because we could not generate much from VAT, port activities have declined, and it is the reason we are not doing well. It means our port is now empty. Meanwhile, the minister is imposing taxes to go and stand at the port and collect money when the people have stopped bringing the goods. Mr. Speaker, this budget is in serious crisis even before it starts. You need 300 billion from the investor community that you are chasing their money and speaking as if their money is your money. Mr. Speaker, how did you get to a point where 45% of our public debt is in short-term instruments? 
giving us a big risk of refinancing. Which economic money that does that? But these are the people, and that's what they have delivered to our economy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the governor is reporting that he has only given 19 billion to, to government. And yet all indicators of monetary su money, money supply in the economy are showing an astronomical jump by, the, by he himself. Mr. Speaker, he says that the pace of expansion in monetary aggregates accelerated in October 2022 on the back of increased net domestic assets of depository corporation sector, while net foreign assets declined sharply. Broad money supply, including foreign currency deposit, grew by 45% year on year in October 2022, compared with 14% in the same period of 2021. Reserve money recorded an annual growth of 62.7% in October 2022, compared with 25%. Mr. Speaker, what all this is saying is that some strange money has suddenly found its way into the Canadian economy. And the governor is the only one who can pump money into our economy. So why is the governor pumping so much money? Which money is not chasing the foreign currency? Which money is not chasing inflation? Which money he's trying to recall with increases in policy rates? And that is why I keep saying that, Mr. Speaker, if we remove Kano Foriata and leave the governor of the central bank, what we have done is to leave and come and fight another day. Both of them must leave. But, Mr. Speaker, the banking sector is already suffering the impact of our financial crisis. Mr. Speaker, the governor is reporting that financial, financial sounder indicators, which shows how resilient our banking sector is, showed strong asset growth, he said, showed broadly positive. The industry capital adequacy was 14.2% as at the end of October, above the prudential minimum of 13%, but shows a sharp decline from 19.8%. Mr. Speaker, what this is simply telling us is that because of this financial crisis, the governor is explaining that because of asset losses of loans that they gave to government, which had to be marked to market, with banks now taking on the losses on their balance sheet, their capital base deteriorated from 195 to 14%. Mr. Speaker, the rule by Basel 2 and 3 is that you must have a capital of about 13%. We are only one point above the Basel rule. And yet we are talking about financial restructuring without knowing that these are the people who will suffer the consequences and eventually they will be eroded and they will be out of the market. Mr. Speaker, I want to advise the government to be circumspect in this pronouncement and be very decisive in dealing with the debt question. Otherwise, we will end up wiping out our financial sector and you and I will not have any place to hide. Mr. Speaker, on this note, I saw some pictures of Garnes Maguire trying to play tricks with the football. Mr. Speaker, we just hope that he is not doing that in training to score another than against Garnes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.